Welcome to Spire Technologies. My name is Guillermo, and today I'd like to give you the information you need to program any router or firewall for SIP trunking with the Spider PBX. If you, you, if you get a router from us, it will either be Cisco or NetGate, as we feel they offer the greatest security and capability on the market today. But you don't need to get a router from us if you already have one that provides two things. One, quality of service to prioritize voice over data, and two, VPN to allow for remote support. The truth is there are many manufacturers that will work perfectly fine, such as those from Barracuda, Fortinet, SonicWall, Sophos, WatchGuard, and Zizel, just to name a few. In fact, we use a dozen or so virtual machines dedicated to remotely supporting the various sites with each manufacturer's specific VPN client. Now, today I will cover port forwarding, access rules, and the SIP application layer gateway or SIP ALG that is needed to properly route SIP trunks. These are the fundamentals that are required regardless of manufacturer. And because every brand of router looks completely different anyways, I'm going to do so without even using a computer. My goal here is to simply point you in the right direction. Now, let me also say that there is a big difference between commercial business and consumer residential routers. This does not mean you should be forcing a low end router to do something that was never designed to support. Please contact us and let's make sure you're using the correct tools for the job. And with that disclaimer out of the way, let's begin. The first thing we want to do is to create an access rule denying all traffic on port 5060 UDP from everywhere. This port needs to always be protected and is where the signaling takes place of this person wants to call that person. The second thing you need to do is to create a second access rule allowing all traffic on port 5060 UDP from your SIP trunk providers specific public IP addresses, which will you need to get and be sure to make this access rule a higher priority than the first deny access rule, which effectively whitelists your provider. Now, your ship trunk can either A, use direct to IP, which is ready or not, here it comes, or B, your spider can reach out and register or open and actively maintain a connection with your provider. Using registrations does not require port forwarding, but it doesn't hurt either. We would always just tell you to create the port forwarding so you can easily choose between the two methods. Therefore, the third thing you will want to do is to port forward all traffic from your spider's private IP address on port 5060 UDP for signaling and also ports 10,000 through 20,000 for the RTP. The way the SIP protocol works, a random number number will be negotiated to transmit the actual audio that you hear in a phone call in this RTP range, again, between 10,000 through 20,000 UDP. And because no signaling is done in RTP, only audio, there is no security risk. Therefore, no access rules are required for this range if you so choose. The fourth and final thing that we need to discuss is the SIP application layer gateway or SIP ALG. What this does is, is it catches all SIP traffic going through your router and rewrites them with headers of, of the packets interjecting itself in the flow. The idea was that it would add a layer of security, but the reality is it causes a ridiculous amount of headaches for everyone. For this reason, every provider on the planet will tell you to disable SIP ALG in your router. That is, if your router understands the protocol is SIP aware and has this ability. As is most often the case, different manufacturers of routers often like to rename terminology just for them. 
and the SIP ALG is known by many different names. Cisco ASA refers to SIP ALG as SIP inspection, while Cisco PIX describes it as SIP fixup. Fortinet uses the term session helper, while Sophos calls it a SIP module. SonicWall likes to refer to it as SIP transformation and also further requires you to enable consistent NAT to stop port hopping. Whatever your router likes to call SIP ALG, just be sure to disable it. To sum it up, all you need to allow, you need to allow your spider to do uh, SIP trunking through your router is to create access rules, set up port forwarding, and disable SIP ALG. As for quality of service, bandwidth management, traffic shaping, and prioritizing voice over data, I'll have to save that for another video. At the end of the day, I would tell you to take these pointers, follow your manufacturer's instructions on your specific router, and as always, we're here to help you. So please contact us if you have any questions on routers, firewalls, and SIP trunks using the Spider PBX. Thank you. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications of new videos. Thank you from all of us at Spider Technologies.